and gentlemen, this is Trisha with Insectopia, and we are looking at a whole new insect today. We, it's possible we've done a tiger beetle before on this, uh, on this live stream, but we have not done this species yet, because I just, because <clears throat> I just pulled it off of the spreading board, so I know that much. Um, tiger beetles... Uh, we, we like to start the beginning of our classes a lot of times with the taxonomy of our insect here. So because it's a beetle, obviously, we're working in the order Coleoptera. Um, coleos stands for sheath or hard, and Terra stands for wings. So that refers to the... So that refers to the front wings of the beetles, um, those hard outer shells that we call elytra. Um, that's what the whole order is named after. Um, when we're talking about the family, um, tiger beetles are actually a subfamily of ground beetles. So the family is going to be Carabidae. Notice that it ends in D-A-E. <clears throat> so family, insect families at least, end in I-D-A-E. Um, and then when we go into a subfamily, the tiger beetles, like I said, are a subfamily of ground beetles. And the, it is Cisindelini. Um, so subfamilies of insects end in I-N-A-E rather than I-D-A-E. All right. So that is going to be where we're working in today. Um, I have a guess as to what species that we are working on, but I can't guarantee that that's, that it's true because... I think it's what we call the one-spotted tiger beetle, except that we can't really see the one spot on the elytra. I'll show you where I think it is. So, we're going to scoot our specimen up so that we can see the elytra a little bit better. And zoom in right around here. There we go. That's closing in on it. So if we look right around here, there looks like there's that little bit of a, a lighter spot, and it's a region on the elytra that doesn't have any punctations. So my thought is that's where this right here is where the one spot used to be, and maybe it faded after the specimen passed away. I'm not sure. And so I would I would guess that we are working with the one spotted tiger beetle. And that where where I'm pointing is the one spot. And if we were working with that species, I can give you the species name for it. It's a a terodella. Uni punctata. So, um, uni meaning one and uh, punctata meaning punctated or punctures. Um, my guess is that means kind of like one spot. All right? So, a pteridella uni punctata or the one spotted tiger beetle. Um, we're just going to refer to it as a tiger beetle because I, that's where I am confident of my identification. Um, and then as I'm working through and identifying some of these specimens, maybe I'll be able to get like a, um, more, uh, answers that I'm, I'm more happy with, I guess. I'd like to key it out. All right, so uh, this specimen is really interesting in that when it passed away, its um, reproductive organs popped out. <laughs> uh, so this... Let's see. 
this right here is not normally sticking out of the body. Normally that's all tucked in. This is the male reproductive organ. So we know that this tiger beetle is a male that we are looking at. And funny enough, there are some species and some um, types of tiger beetles that you actually need to dissect the reproductive organs so that you can tell what species it is. So this one already has it sticking out. So if there was a, uh, a tiger beetle specialist, that would actually help them identify it to species too. All right. So we are gonna get a, we're gonna get a rough overview of our of our sketch started, and then we'll be able to zoom in and check out some of the characteristics. Tiger beetles, I love for their iridescence, so they're gonna be a, he's gonna be a lot of fun to look at as we zoom in. Um, the body doesn't look too metallic in comparison to some other. Um, in comparison to other species that are like metallic green or metallic blue. But when we zoom in, you'll see that it's almost like a metallic bronze color. And you can see red, green, and blue all within that, um, all within the individual. All right, so I'm writing on the top of my paper tiger beetle. And then I'm going to be writing Cisindelini because that's our subfamily that says that it's a tiger beetle. And I'm going to put a double arrow and I'm going to write this, the species that we believe it is, A. Terodella unipunctata. And sometimes I will put SP question mark, and I know generally that means if uh, like spelling question mark, but in that character time, I'm referring to species question mark, as in, I'm pretty sure. I would probably give myself, you know, like a 75% sure on that. <laughs> All right, um, we're gonna go ahead and get our sketch started. You can see that the head, the eyes are kind of bulging out of the head. Um, and the tiger beetles have a fairly large clippius or up there at the front of the head right before the mandibles. So where we're gonna start is probably the head shape. <laughs> I'm going to give myself a starting head shape with two parentheses and then coming down to give myself kind of this neck region right here. And these lines run parallel to one another. Keep in mind, this is going to be our first light sketch, so make sure that you don't sketch too hard because we're likely going to be erasing some of these lines as we come through and edit. Um, we're also going to have a little bit, I want to make sure that it comes up a little bit on the front too. So I'm going to actually lengthen my head just a little bit. So you have a neck almost on the bottom that's fairly long, and then uh, up here on the front that's kind of half that. And then we have the, um, the clippius up in front of that. So right around here, we've got, you can bring it up two lines that are parallel, and then you keep in mind that all insects are symmetrical. So if you imagine that center line here, that's where the furthest point of the clippius is going to be, and then you can get it down like this. Some, t some people that I work with go give my themselves an entire line here so that they can kind of follow and mirror it over. Um, I generally will add it as I go when I need it, kind of like an as-needed basis. All right, so that's going to be the beginning or the start of our head shape. Um, moving back, this is the first segment of the thorax right here, and it's going to be um, mostly a, a taller than wide rectangle, except that, you know what? We're going to make it like this, and then when we come back and we fix it, we will go in and add that larger wave. We might be able to do it now, but... I have a feeling that there's going to be a little bit more detail on these edges. Let's try it, though. 
All right, so we're gonna start here and kind of give ourselves a neck and then widen it out just a little bit and then come back in. And we want it to be as smooth as possible. All right, so that's what we call the pronotum or the first segment of the thorax. In this beetle, it almost looks like a neck that connects the head and what people might call the abdomen back here. But there are two more segments of the thorax back after this one. All right, so let's go ahead and scooch our specimen back so that we can see more of the, uh, more of the backside. Now this is going to be an artist's choice type of situation because you can choose to end your specimen right here and kind of round off the abdomen. Or you can sketch it as we see it and you can add those reproductive organs. I believe, I believe that the, yeah. So what we're looking at, the male reproductive organ in insects is called the adegus. And so that's what you would call it, A-E-D-E-A-G-U-S, adegus. So right there, down there, that's the adegus or the male reproductive organ. Um, if we're looking way up here at the top, you can see that there's this little triangle right there. That little triangle is called the Scutellum, and it is right between the two front wings, the two hard shell-like wings. All right, so if we if we follow that kind of median line, the triangle is going to be at the very tip at, on that central line. All right, and then our elytra come out and are kind of shouldered. We have this little bit of what we call a humeral angle or a, or a shoulder angle. In, in beetles, this little shoulder right here is called the humerus. And um, sometimes I'll let that remind me of like, you know when you bump your funny bone and it hurts a lot? That's, um, and they, they call it a, the funny bone because it's the humerus. And this is the beetle's humerus. So the elytra does get wider before it comes down to a point. So we're going to try and get that overall shape as well as we can. There's this little bit of a, a concavity to it. Let's see. And this is why we sketch nice and light, so that we can get to the shape we need. So it gets wide, and then it comes back to being narrow. I'm pretty happy with that side, so now all I have to do is make this side even. shape of the elytra taken care of and we've kind of wound it down in the back I'm gonna give ourselves that central line right here to separate the left and the right elytron and they don't meet evenly at the end they kind of they they have this little bit of a Y here so let's see I need to make sure that I think my my line went off to the left just a little bit so I'm gonna fix that That's better. All right, so after I got that central line, all I was doing was separating the very, very end of the wings. And as it turns out, I did not leave myself room for the adegas, so I'm probably not going to be sketching it. But I will make sure that we zoom in just in case you would like to. Or I can sketch it like up here somewhere. <laughs> 
And that might even be better to have it separate. Um, if you imagine the uh, what the abdomen looks like, it might show a little bit from after the elytra. So right about right around here, it's gonna kind of come down to a point rather than have that organ. All right, so we have a head, we have a thoracic region, we have an abdomen, so we're doing pretty good on the body. Um, let's go ahead and sketch some of these, some of the um, lengths of the legs, and then we'll be able to zoom in and check some of these really, um, check out the features. So let's move around a little bit. There we go. So we're going to be looking at the front leg of our tiger beetle. It's so pretty. It's metallic green. <clears throat> oh, it's gorgeous. All right. So um, I am not doing a final sketch of these legs. What I would like to do is just give myself kind of the lengths of the the lengths of the segments. So I'm gonna build stick legs. I'm gonna give myself this angle here. That's gonna be that femur coming out. Um, it does look like it's coming out mostly straight, but I'm gonna angle it back just a little bit to imitate some walking. Um, then we have the tibia come up, and it looks like the tibia comes up to about halfway up the eye. All right, so I've got, that's where I think I'm going to end the tibia. And then we have toe segments. We call them tarsi, spelled T-A-R-S-I. And if we're looking at the tiger beetle's tarsi, you have got one, two, three, four, five tarsi and then two tarsal claws all right so one two three four five tarsi and two claws at the end that's going to be one two three four five six and it might run into my words, so I'm just going to erase the D right here. <laughs> you know, that'll be good enough. So then we will have our, all of our tarsal segments figured out. And that's going to be our front leg. For the middle and the hind legs in, on insects, the middle and the hind legs generally point backwards. There are exceptions to that rule, including sometimes when you're seeing dragonflies, they'll kind of bend their legs forward because they're using their legs as a basket. All right, so I think what will be best for our sketch is to draw the middle legs just how we see them um, coming out and then going back underneath the body. And I think I'm going to use the right hand side as my point of view rather than the left hand side because I like that the legs are coming up a little bit rather than sinking down. Um, you can see that the knees are kind of pointing in an upward direction. So I'm going to say the femur is going to come up like this, maybe even less of an angle, more like this. The femur comes out like this, and then the tibia comes back in and under the body. All right, so that's our femur tibia. And then right where, right where the tibia goes back underneath the body, that's where the next femur is going to be coming out. Not as, um, you can take this angle and then just relax it just a little bit. All right. Then our tibia is going to be coming back, and it looks like the tibia is going to reach all the way back to around here. Something that you'll notice about tiger beetles is their incredibly long legs. 
All right. Uh, tiger beetles can are one of the fastest running insects on the planet. Um, I believe this there's a species in Australia that was tagged the fastest. Um, but generally, as an entire subfamily, tiger beetles run so fast that they cannot see while they're running. It's like everything goes into light speed. All right, so one, two, three, four, five. So it looks like we have five tarsi on the hind leg also. So the likelihood is, we didn't really look at the middle legs, but if there's five in the front and five in the back, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess that there's five in the middle too. And we have a five, five, five tarsal formula, meaning there are five tarsi on the front, five tarsi on the middle, and five tarsi on the hind. Now, I didn't leave enough room for all my tarsal segments, so I'm just going to let them kind of fade off of the board, fade off of my paper. That'll be fine. Whoops. All right, I'm pretty happy with where we're starting, so let's go ahead and zoom in and check out some of these features. see your face. So cool. she is. The metallicness of this beetle is really difficult to capture because it's kind of bronze, but it goes through the entire rainbow in certain areas. So you can see it go red, orange, yellow, green, blue practically all the way through the rainbow, which is why it makes it look so dark. Um, when I'm looking at this guy, I'm seeing an extra facial segment that I um, that I don't recognize. So I'm going to look up the segments on our beetle's head really quick just to make sure that I'm not missing anything. I believe that I thought that that big white part was the clippiest, but that actually might be the labrum or the upper lip. So, those of you who are hanging out and watching with me today, is this your first time joining me? All right, we're going to have to look at, we're going to have to flip this beetle and look at it in other directions so that I can know what, uh, what that body segment is. So, we're going to be flipping our beetle all the way upside down. So that I can see that. So cool. All right, so that means that that white part is the labrum, it's the upper lip. All right, so this is what the bottom of the head looks like. And there are a lot of things happening here. So I could just go ahead and, and give you a little bit of a detail as to what we're looking at. These are predatory mandibles. These are mandibles that are huge and they are ready to attack and eat prey. Um, Tiger beetles are incredibly quick. They have great eyesight when they are standing still and they are very strong. They have very strong mandibles. They bite really hard. Don't catch them with your hands um, unless you're ready for that. So these down here that almost look like they're pointing down normally are pointing forward and those are what we call labial palps. They are mouth fingers. They sit at the bottom of the mouth and they help push the push food into the mandibles because you know Tiger beetles don't have the ability to use spoons and forks, and so therefore they need little mouth fingers or labial palps to help push their food in. Um, right in this area, these are the mandibles, and the mandibles, I believe, have... So cool. The mandibles have those long hairs on them, 
And I believe that that's to help with, like, with, um, siphoning the, like, the juices of the insects that they're eating down into their mouth part. Welcome, Harvey! I'm glad you're with us today. So we've got those that are the bottom lips of the labial palps, and then... You can see right about here, one, two, three, four, there looks like there's another set of palps or another set of little mouth fingers. Those ones that are on the top are called maxillary palps. So you've got the maxillary on the top and the labial palps on the bottom. So now that we got to see the mouth parts, I can tell you what the head, what, the, what pieces these had what what um the segments of this head oh don't you run away from me here we go Alright, so this is what I was seeing and why I wanted to flip it over. We have an additional segment up on the top of the head, and that's called the clippius. And in this beetle, it's actually very narrow. It's a lot sh shorter than I thought it was going to be. My specimen doesn't want to stay under the microscope. Come on, friend. There we go. That's way better. Great. I just got to scooch it a little bit down so we can see the front. Perfect. All right, so we've got our sketch here we're look that we're looking at now. Um, when I add the when I added these uh, parentheses on the edges of my head, I was kind of taking the average of the eyes rather than giving an outline of the eyes. So when we draw the eyes on our on our head, we're gonna take let's see, I'm gonna come into the body just a little bit. And then there is that little, um, we almost could call these eyes reniform eyes or um, kidney-shaped eyes because they have this little divot here. They've got a little divot there. And then it comes down. So we've got this type of shape on the inside of the eye. And then when we add the rest of the compound eye, make sure to go past where we originally thought. Because if you go a little bit past, that's gonna make the eye look like it's bulging out or away from the head. And that's gonna be important with our tiger beetles. They've got big, bulgy eyes. All right, and then we're gonna do that same thing on the other side. I'll give you the line, the little, um, the little indent into the eye, and then bulge over where we had originally planned. All right, very good. Uh, with our, with our, um, the antenna, the antenna are going to be connected right up here in the front of the head, but is um, before the clippius. So we're gonna connect the eye, we're gonna connect the antenna right here to just in front of the eyes. Let's see. I'm just going to give us that first segment to work with, and then we'll look at the antenna in its entirety in a moment. Um, so we've got that segment. Now it looks like I'm going to need a little bit more room up here to get this clippius in. So I'll show you where it is now that I've said it a, bu a bunch of times. The clippius is spelled like this, C-L-Y-P-E-U-S. And it's located right here. So you can see that there's this little wave right here and that's what, um, that's a, a different segment of the exoskeleton essentially. So um, this is where we would kind of, people would call this the head and then if you wanted to speak specifically about this part right here, you would call it the clippius. 
this big white guy right here is actually the upper lip of uh, the tiger beetle. So we call that the labrum. Spelled this way. Is that big guy up there in the front. And you know what? When we sketch that, because of all those points, it's probably going to look like a crown. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to add my clippius on the right side first because that's where my antenna is. Let's see. I'm going to start around here, and I want to give it, wave it up just a little bit. Make sure that you're working... You know, keep in mind that you are working on a central line, so that highest point is going to be um, in the exact center of the body. And then, after you get that taken care of, this top line isn't straight across either. It's mostly straight, but then when you get to the center, it comes down a little bit. So that right there is going to be your clippius. Up here, we've got the labrum, the upper lip. And it looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five. So it looks like there's a point on either side, um, a two-thirds mark, and then a central point. So there are five points on our labrum. More like one. Oh, we are going to pull that back just a little bit. Let's see. One, two, three. That's going to be a little bit trickier. Let's see. I'm going to give myself a central line for this one so that I can see the very, very point to the top. And I'm going to work my way down instead of working my way up. I think that'll be easier for me. There we go. All right, now we have the antenna on the other side. I'm going to just draw the antenna on the right side and then the legs on the left side because the antenna and the legs are going to cross over each other and get all complicated. Um, and if you would like to draw both sets, you can feel free to do that. All right, I'm going to angle our specimen so that the antenna should all be on the same plane so that we can see around about how long it is and how many segments the antenna have. There we go. It looks like one. Come on, get back into focus for me. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so it looks like there are ten antennal segments, and the antenna can be broken down into three names. We have the scape, the pedicel, and the flagellum. All right, the scape is the segment that we have already sketched. It's the first segment. Um, a lot of times in insects, the scape is a very sturdy segment. It tends to be a lot wider and thicker. It's the one that connects the entire antenna to the head, so it's got to be pretty, t pretty uh, sturdy. The pedicel is the second segment and is generally a lot smaller and is responsible for the flexibility, making sure that the antenna can go backwards and forwards and retrieve all of the angles that they need. So this has to be kind of a small segment so that it has the most mobility. And then we have eight more segments that are nice and long. Uh, so we're looking at... Looks like the antenna is going to end right about here at the shoulder angle. So I could even go ahead and give myself a really light line here to work off of so I know how long the antenna is going to be. So I'm going to fit eight segments into this space. And the first one is the longest. So let's see. One. Uh, the second one is slightly shorter. Make sure that you do these individually so that... Um, rather than making the entire one and then just dividing it because you end up with these really nice spaces in between the antenna that make them look like they could actually move, be mobile. All right, so that is 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so those are our ten antennal segments. This antenna is nice and straight, kind of like a thin straight filament in a, in a light bulb, and we call them filiform antenna, or filly meaning straight and form meaning kind of the type. So the antennal type on these guys is filiform. Um, I am actually going to come back up here and change this eye just a little bit because after looking at it, I want to make sure that this angle is a little bit more natural more like this rather than having that kind of C shape in the middle of the head because now that we're seeing it from this angle I think that that's going to be more representative of what the eyes shapes it, shape is alright I'm going to end our head finally now one of the things that I always love about tiger beetles is all of that kind of fingerprinting kind of striations on the head. Um, I don't know if we would call them striations if they're not straight, because striations are normally stripes, but that's what they remind me of, all of these beautiful ridges. And there's a part of me that really wants to go into the specimen and kind of shade it with those ridges or with those kind of fingerprint patterns. But as we're zooming in and checking this out, I love the variety in iridescence. <clears throat> I don't want it to look like hair, so I'm going to leave it be. All right, let's move down to the pronotum. Boop, boop, boop. Maybe dark violet is the right term for this color. I've been trying to come up with a good name because I was thinking it's kind of bronze patterned, but after looking at some of the spotting and... It makes me almost feel like it's kind of a purple color. All right, so we can see that there are those two wide spaces where we did sketch, but now that we've zoomed in, we can see that there that it's kind of like an expansion where there's these two kind of bulbous regions on the pronotum. So I'm going to give myself a very light sketch of what those might look like on our pronotum here and to make sure that that with those the outer lines are about right for what we want yeah all right so now that I'm pretty I'm actually pretty happy with that shape so I'm just gonna come in and darken that up you can feel free to also darken up your darken up that shape And this line where it connects the pronotum to the elytra is not straight across. There is a little bit of shaping where it comes up and then angles. So there is just a little bit of shaping here. And I'm going to leave these lighter lines here. I don't think that they should be totally dark because those are not um, those are not new segments of the beetle. Those are just uh, it's kind of detailing. Let's check out the elytra. Bump, bump, bump. I love the rainbows on the elytra. On the wings. For those of you who don't talk bug just yet. All right, the elytra would be, well, would be what we call the beetle's forewings. 
um, or the front pair of wings. The uh, hind pair of beetle wings, we call them membranous wings because they're clear and they have membranes. They generally tuck underneath the elytra, but in this specimen, it has a little bit of its membranous wings sticking out. That's just um, one of the things that it did when it passed away. So you can see there almost looks like there's this change in texture right around here. That's the wing sticking out. It didn't fold in underneath the elytra properly. All right, so right here in the very, very center, we have that beautiful triangular scutellum. And funny enough, the ends of the scutellum point to those indents in the pronotum. And I wonder if that has something to do with their movement and how they have to kind of tilt and angle the front of their body. So that's pretty cool. All right, and then I'm checking out the overall shape of my elytra. And I am pretty happy with the final shape that we had from earlier. So I'm just going to go ahead and darken that. And then we'll zoom in and look at some of the uh, texturing. Oops. No, it's got to go straight. Please go straight. There we go. It's like sometimes my arm likes to go, is pretty good at going straight. And other times it's like, nope, nope. We want to go this way or that way. All right, so we have an elytra, the front four wings, and we have the end of the abdomen, so that works for me. Let's zoom in. Because if this is the one-spotted tiger beetle, as I expect, as I suspect, these two little shapings where it's nice and smooth right there yeah, I, I really think it is. Look at that color. The more you zoom in, the more of that, uh, the more of that rainbow iridescent coloration you get until there's not enough light. Let's see, right around here we were getting it pretty good. So every single one of those punctations has a rainbow hues to them. And that's because we're not looking at a pigmented color. We're looking at a structural color. Um, meaning that there are actually small little crystals or small little microscopic gems on the edges of, on the outside of the elytra. And it's actually the shape of the elytra that gives off this color. The way that the wavelengths have to bounce off the structures and reflect back to you, that's the colors that we see. And so because of that whole system that's happening here, that's why you get the, that same kind of, uh what do we call it, pattern of color, where it's um, blue on the center of the dot, and then it brings, and it, like, carries kind of that rainbow up. All of these spots have the same, like, pattern to them, and that's because of the angle at which you're looking at them. They're so pretty! There's more light up here, so I'm wondering if we can get it even more clearly. That little gold dot, if you are new around and you're curious about it, that little gold dot that's out of focus, that's actually the head of the pin. He's so pretty. All right, so that's what a structural color is. What's cool about a structural color is that it never, ever, ever fades. Uh, because it's not a pigment. It's not um, something, it's not like a chemical that can fade over time. It's the actual structure of the, of the exoskeleton, and that's not going to change. So that's one thing that's really cool about tiger beetles is that they have a coloration that lasts for a lifetime and more. So if we're looking at right about where that one spot would be, if you take the widest point and you go up just a little bit, 
It's going to be right around here. And it doesn't go, it goes almost to the edge of the elytra, but it's on both sides. It's kind of small, and that's why it's called the one-spotted tiger beetle. All right. Let's get some legs put on our beetle friend here. I'm pretty happy with how she's turning out. He, it's a he. It's got a really big adegus. All right, and then the legs are actually a metallic green color. As a general rule, if you see an insect that is metallic, that's a structural color that's not going to fade. If you see an insect that has a flat color that's non-iridescent, like a praying mantids or dragonflies or grasshoppers, those are insects that fade over time. All right. So the base of the femur, we're looking at the leg now. Uh, we've got some major major leg parts that I want to share with you. We've got the, <laughs> the femus, the femur, the tibia, and the tarsi. So the femur is this big wide section right here. If you think about that um, bone, the big bone between your hip and your knee, that's your femur. And insects have a femur too. Um, so this one is it looks like it's actually wider at the base than at the top so i made it a little bit more narrow i'm gonna make sure it's there we go all right so it's wider at the base than at the top and it does have some smaller hairs up here on the front um the next segment is the tibia it's the segment that is in between um the femur and the tarsi but if you think about your bones that your tibia is the bone in between your knee and your ankle that's your tibia. Uh, our tiger beetle's tibia reaches to about halfway past the eye. So I had given myself a line already right around here. And then I'm just going to bring it all the way up. Make sure that it's kind of narrower at the top and a little bit wider at the base. Kind of like a uh, boot cut jean. <laughs> so that's our tibia. And then we have tarsal segments. Now, it looks like we have approximately five tarsal segments, or five tarsi, and they get increasingly smaller. So the first one is the largest, and they get smaller every time, until it looks like the fifth segment might be longer than three and four, more like equal to two. So I'll show you that. <coughs> All right, so the tarsi are very narrow. One. Two. Three. Four. And so three and four are a lot smaller, but we want to get to five and then increase it just a little bit so that it is about equal to the second tarsal segment. Oh, and it's going to be pretty narrow, too. I made mine a little bit too wide. All right. And then two tarsal claws. And those claws are actually pretty long. So I'm going to come back in here and erase this and darken some of these lines. I just wanted to get... I had a central line in there that I hadn't erased yet, so I wanted to fix that one up before I... There we go. So that is going to be the first leg of our tiger beetle. Now, tiger beetles can run super duper duper fast. They are incredibly quick runners. And you can see that they have these really, really, really long legs. We call these cursorial legs because they are running legs. Um, super duper fast, really thin, long tarsal segments. And you can imagine that they're running just on the tips of their toes. So there's not a whole lot of like friction between them and the ground. Now, uh, there were some scientists who wanted to test the um, 
the running and visual capabilities of tiger beetles. And so they wanted to know what type of um, effect the antennae had on their ability to kind of see around them while they're running because they can't they can't see with their eyes so it's like how do they not run into things so when um the scientists trimmed some of these tiger beetles antenna so that they were shorter and then they watched them run and they were comparing them against tiger beetles that had nice long antenna and um they found that the tiger beetles with the shortcut antenna were regularly running into things like walls and rocks and things that the other tiger beetles could manipulate around even while they were running and they couldn't see. And so these antenna are very, very important for making sure they don't run into things. All right, the femurs are wider at the base and narrower at the top. Just by a little bit. And the tibia comes back towards the body. All right, and then the hind leg. Now the hind leg also has five tarsal segments or five toe segments. And I believe, yes, um, they have that same one, two, three, and four. Um, all of those segments get smaller and smaller, and it almost looks like the fifth one stays in that pattern. So the fifth one is also a little bit shorter. Good to know. So the femur, once again, is wide at the base and a little bit narrower at the top. So we've got, oh, I need to make sure I turn my camera on. There we go. The femur is wider at base and narrow at the top. And then those tars that tarsal segment, or the tibia, I'm actually going to shrink my tibia just a little bit. I'm going to take it to more like here because I'm thinking maybe a little bit longer, right about here. I might be able to bend the tarsal segments like this and fit them on the page. And the tarsal segments do bend that way. They could have been going in that direction. It's just not how I said it when I was pinning it. All right. So narrow at the top and then wider at the bottom. A little bit like a boot cut jeans. That's what the tibia sometimes remind me of. So... Oops. Not too narrow. There oh, that was almost there. So this specimen was collected on a trail in New Jersey over in the Pine Barrens on a trail called the Mount Misery Trail. Um, and this was the only tiger beetle of this species that I saw. But while I was hiking in that region, I saw and collected three different species of tiger beetles. So that was pretty, that was a pretty cool thing to experience. Um, tiger beetles really like sandy soils and sandy environments. So you'll find them, like the pine barrens have very sandy soil, so that's a really great place for them. Um, but... You can also find them on the edges of, like, creeks and streams. Uh, you can also find them on the edges of, like, hiking trails because those will have, sometimes they'll have kind of the sandy edges where people are not walking. And the reason they love sand so much is because that's where they lay their babies. Alright, so I made my tarsal segments kind of come out this way, but that is one, two, three, four, five, and I am pretty happy with that angle, actually. Aw, he's so cute. Alright, I want to zoom in and get a better angle for the Adigas.
admit, I'm not exactly sure what the best angle to observe or to view an Adegas is because I haven't spent a lot of time looking at beetle genitalia. Um, a lot of times they're within the body and I don't really like dissecting my specimens because the moment you dissect them, then they're like ripped apart and I would much rather have my specimens complete. But I think if we view it from this side, you can kind of see these cool little parts of it. Honestly, I can tell you that it's an Adegas, A-E-D-E-A-G-U-S. I'm just going to say male repro, meaning reproductive organ. Um, so that's what the organ looks like, but I can't tell you what the individual parts are. So I'm actually going to give it, I'm going to give it a go and try and sketch it over here. Let's see, maybe coming down. So um, those segments that are directly coming out of the abdomen, so these ones that are kind of soft, those are almost like they're non-sclerotized or non-hardened parts of like organs and things like that. So really you only see that part actually during the mating process when he's kind of forcing it out really hard. <laughs> oh, it is what it is. So we've got those two like non-sclerotized or like membranous segments that are coming out. And then To me, it almost looks like there is this, I'm sketching it like this, by the way. It almost looks like there's this sheath that's double wide on the top. So I guess I could draw it kind of like this so that you can see both. Something like that. And then coming out from underneath it, it almost looks like, like grabbers, like pinchers. And I'm not sure what the purpose of those are. But I would say there's this one on the top. And then this one kind of on the bottom. And then you've got, maybe this is just a little bit... Kind of more like that. And then you've got some hairs in here. And it's the same thing on the other side. So you could, if you've got this doubled up on the top, you're going to want to kind of double that up on the bottom too. So you get that little bit of depth because we're seeing kind of two angles. And I do believe that in between these two grasper parts, there is... I want to call it the pokey part. Um, uh, a sphere right here in between the two with this point. So you've got these that are the graspers. And then you've got in the center, you've got almost like a ball with a point. And that's kind of like the, the stabby part. And then you've got two more claspers on the other side that you aren't going to be able to see from this angle. So, I've never drawn an Adegas, but A-D-A-E-D-E-A-G-U-S. That would be the male reproductive organ going down right there if we were going to add it. And I guess I will write, I'll write lateral here so that I know that it was a view from the side rather than a dorsal view from the top like our sketches. All right, ladies and gentlemen out there, I hope that you've been having a great time following along and sketching with me. Uh, let's see, one spotted... 
tiger beetle over the course of the day i think i have convinced myself that it's one spotted tiger beetle because after looking at it and looking at these shapes down here that's what i believe it is if it's not it has to be in the same genus i really think so this aterodella um genera genus so there we go i've got one antenna three legs i will generally just draw half of the insect um because if I need to add the other side, <laughs> I can do it electronically, and then they are, um, and then it's symmetrical. <laughs> All right. Let's see. If anyone has any additional places that they would like to view on the tiger beetle, you can go ahead and let me know now. Um, the only other part that I really like to show people is the underside. <laughs> yes. So, not only is the top absolutely beautiful and metallic and gorgeous, the ventral side is also metallic and gorgeous. So it has this blue-purple metallics in it, and then if you look at the very central or where that ridge is, you can get almost into like a bright green color. Um, tiger beetles are a subfamily we mentioned of ground beetles, and all ground beetles have this right here um this little expanded piece here that looks like um that looks like the tiger beetle has a little bit of an extra muscle here and here um that is the characteristic for ground beetles so any ground beetle if you flip it over and you look at it it'll have this guy right here um examples of ground beetles would be like those black beetles with the orange legs that you see when you flip over rocks or a lot of times just black beetles that when you flip over the rocks if they're small and they're running really fast the likelihood is they're a ground beetle all right tiger beetles prefer more sandy environments and you won't find them under rocks they're always running around out in the open all right let's see i'm gonna go switch over to my closer ladies and gentlemen i hope that you have had a wonderful day sketching our tiger beetle with me this is my final sketch if you would like to um take a picture or screenshot it this is what mine looks like i hope that your sketch i hope that you are proud of your sketch also because we've had a great time getting to know this tiger beetle and really zooming in and checking out some of its characteristics i also teach on a platform called out school for younger students so ages 5 to 8 9 to 12 if you've got a bug lover in your life who would like to learn all about insects I think the last insect that we were talking about were fireflies. And so this is kind of an example of what we might learn, um, what, how the males act during and how the females act. And we talk about their life cycle and all those types of things. So you can find me on OutSchool. If you use the link below, you have the ability to um, get $20 for free towards your first classes. That is your reminder to subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, so right about there. Um, thank you, Harvey, for hanging out with me and chatting with me and for subscribing because only my subscribers get to chat in the chat box. So thank you very much. Um, if you would like to share your sketch with me or if you just want to... Um, ask me a bug question or introduce yourself or any of those things. I'm always re responding to emails and those types of things. So shoot me an email at trisha at theinsectopia.com. I love identifying bugs for people. So if you have an insect that you take a picture of and you're like, I just don't know what this is, go ahead and send it to me and I'll do the best I can. Or I'll send it to one of my other bug friends who will be able to identify it for you. All right. Um, that right there is a QR code directly to my um, PayPal. If you've had a great time today, if you've learned a lot, um, go ahead and you can feel free to send me a small tip there. Um, you honestly do not have to or don't feel pressured to, but I like to have it there just in case you would like to, you know, buy me a coffee or help me out with pinning supplies. It's always, always appreciated. All right, so... As that's that. Harvey, thank you for hanging out with me for the entire class. I hope that your sketch came out well. I'd love to see it. Um, so you can always email your sketches here at the at my um, to my email. All right, very good. Have a wonderful rest of your week. I live stream on Thursdays at 10 p.m. Eastern and Sundays at 4 p.m. Eastern. I look forward to seeing you again and stay buggy. Bye.